I'm going to introduce a greatest common factor zombie board game. So this is a great way to practice some greatest common factor skills before our upcoming test. If you notice, we have a giant game board and uh, you can start here and we're going to use one dice as far as rolling to determine how many places we're going to move. And as we move along, you're going to have to solve the problem that's there. So to start with, uh, it looks like uh, we need two people playing. So I have a few pawns here for you, two different colors to get us started. Okay, let's go ahead and do some rolling. Okay, uh, let's pretend that the first player is um, this first, kind of looks blue to you because our colors are inverted today. Uh, if I move one spot, this person has six and 12. And remember, we're doing a review of greatest common factor. So greatest common factor of six and 12. You are expected to show all of your work. So this would be problem number one. It comes from the first square. Well, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit and see if we can get this done. So what do we remember about six and 12? Finding greatest common factor, we could use t-charts for sure. So I could quickly do a t-chart for six and a t-chart for 12. I do have to be careful when numbers get bigger and I might need to use a factor tree instead, but I know most of us like these t-charts quite well. Six is the same as one times six or maybe two times three, but that's about it. It only has four factors. How about 12? It's the same as one times 12 or maybe two times six and don't forget three times four. Well, I'm looking for the greatest common factor, so I see some common things that they share. They both have ones, they both have twos, they both have threes, mm, they both have sixes. Which of those numbers is the greatest? Well, the answer here would be six. The GCF, or greatest common factor, is six. Both um, my partner and myself should be working on these. We should be trying to solve them on our own, and then we kind of compare answers. And because it's my turn and I got it right, I get to stay here. It's my partner's turn to roll. My partner rolled a three. So if I go back to the game board, my partner's sitting here at start and they're gonna move one, two, three. Notice that the problem for number three says 15 and five. And remember, we're reviewing greatest common factor. So both of us, even though this isn't my problem, need to copy down problem number three. The greatest common factor of 15 and five. Let's try a different strategy just so that we can see that they both will work. Let's go ahead and try a factor tree. Well, with 15, we know that that's the same as three times five and both of those numbers are prime. Oh gosh, with five, I can't really break it down. It's already prime. If I really had to show something in my tree, I could write one to five, one and five. But notice this one is special. I better not circle it. I'm just gonna think about that a minute. Well, with all good trees, we get to chop them down or, of course, line up our factorizations. 15 is the same as 3 times 5, and 5 is the same as, well, 1 times 5. That's about all I could get. Do we see anything that they both have in common? Yep, looks like they both share a bundle or a pair of fives. So the greatest common factor, I can only write one time because I only have one bundle, is 5. I'll compare this with my partner. If we agree, my partner gets to stay there. If my partner got it wrong, I might send them back to start and then it might be my turn again. Notice there are some exciting spots on this board. If you get to a trade places, well, if it helps you out, you get to trade places with someone else who's playing. So maybe it moves you closer to the finish line. What about this one? Go forward two spaces. Oh, that would be a good space to land, but then I have another problem to complete to make sure I can stay there. Oh, do you remember that this is a zombie game board? If you land on this zombie, you lose a turn. So unfortunately, no problem to solve. And you sit here a minute. First person to finish this game and get all the way to the end is the winner. Again, watch out for zombies along the way and make sure that you're showing greatest common factor work. We can do that two good ways. One way is using t-charts, but you have to be very careful that you don't miss any common factors. The next way is to use some trees and make sure with all good trees, you line them up when you're done, compare those factorizations and find something they have in common. Once you do, sometimes we have to multiply more than one thing here, but in this case, we only had one pair. So that became my greatest common factor. This is just one of the games we have to play for review. The next game that I'm gonna show you has to do with least common multiples. Multi-fun. 
Let's go ahead and zoom out here a little bit so maybe you can see the game board a wee bit better. Kind of looks like I, have, like I have zombie hands today, doesn't it? All right. Uh, for this one, you and your partner are each going to need 40 of these cubes. So um, you'll want to choose two different colors to play, and you'll want four sticks of 10 each. But you can see here I've just got two different colors to start. Two sticks of 10 is a good enough start for me at this point. So um, down at the bottom, you're going to do some recording. You will choose one spot to start your cube, and your partner will choose another. Well, I'm looking for the least common multiple of 3 and 5. So to find the least common multiple of 3 and 5, I'm going to have to maybe start counting by 3s, or maybe I'm going to build myself a factory tree and do some comparing. So let's give this a try. 3 and 5. I might have to move my game board for a speedy quick minute. 3 and 5. Lots of students enjoy showing multiples, so one way to do this is to count by threes. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, that's a crazy comma, 27, 30, and that would keep on going if I wanted to. Let's try counting by fives quickly. 5, 10, 15, whoa, I see a match. The first common multiple that they both share, or the least common multiple, is 15. So whoever's turn this was gets to cover up the 15 if they get that right. And again, both person, both uh, people should be trying those problems together. So we'll pretend that it was uh, this blue team. This blue team gets to cover up the 15. Well, it's the yellow team's turn. They get to slide their cube one spot somewhere else to try to get a different least common multiple. So maybe they're going to slide it to, say, the 7. They're looking for the least common multiple of both 7 and 3. You could try this multiple list again. You could count by 3s and you could count by 7s. And if you do a good job of that, you'll find that the first common multiple that they both share is actually 21. So if this was my turn, I could take a cube in my color and I could cover up a 21 somewhere on this board. Oh, I see one over here. Oh, sorry, I got the wrong color, didn't I? Try that again. There we go. So your goal is to keep on playing. Um, the next person, it looks like our blue t player, would go ahead and move their cube here to the next number that they choose. So something that they think is going to get them maybe something in a row here. So it looks like if they move this just right, they might be able to get 35. Let's see. This cube has to stay here on 7. It's not their turn to move it. But this cube could move maybe to a 5. Ah, the least common multiple. If I count by fives, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, I can get to 35. And if I count by sevens, 7, 14, 21, 28, and 35. 35 is the LCM. Ooh, good news. If that person gets it right, they now have two in a row. This play really will continue until you get four in a row diagonally, horizontally, vertically. It doesn't really matter. And I should point out these free spaces. They're fair game, so this person also is tied up at this point. We have two to two, two in a row. If you look, someone here should be competing to get this next spot because this would be a great spot to get a third in a row. Pretty close to having four in a row, by the way. But this yellow player would have to decide which way to move to try to get that 56 if it's possible. And honestly, this yellow cube has to stay here on five. Sorry, it's blue. This blue cube has to stay here on five. So you'd have to move this in some way, shape, or form to get to 56, and I'm not sure you could do it with this move. So maybe there's something else that would help them. Again, this is just a fun way to review least common multiple. The numbers here are pretty nice to work with. So on the test, you need to be prepared for some bigger problems or some bigger numbers, and then we might have to move on to our factor trees. But just for a quick review, counting by multiples or skip counting, this will work. This again is called multifon. It's really finding the least common multiple. And you can find these games both online if you're interested. It looks like I found this one at www.mathnook.com.